Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. It's the Tidarium here. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the vintage 1978-1979 Radio Control Jawa Sandcrawler made by Kenner. This is one of the harder to acquire pieces, is a little bit pricier one, but there's actually quite a few on eBay. I'm going to talk to you about this feature. I'm going to compare it to a few other things, and then I'm going to tell you at the end how if you're looking to get one of these complete, I'll give you my tips to pick one up in 2021. Let's get into this. Coming up. So as always, the first thing I want to look at is the box. Now, mine is not in the greatest condition. Of course, I didn't pay a whole lot for it. I actually bought 40 boxes from a guy for 200 bucks uh, like a decade ago. So here is the top of it, and it kind of shows you a few things, and you can see uh, just some little play scenarios and things like that. Uh, the ladder's on the wrong side. And then on the front, you do see the radio control. So the cloth Jawas were out, not the vinyl cape ones. They were showing the cloth ones. And here's the side of the box. Here is the back of the box. And it, it says some stuff over here, wireless control, all this stuff. Wireless was a big deal in the 90s, actually. Like most of the, or 90s, 1978, 1979, late 70s. Because most of that stuff still had a wire to it. So wireless was a big deal. Added quite a bit of cost at the time to it. But still, it was pretty good, pretty solid. Let's see what the bottom of the box looks like. And it's kind of, in a way, cross-sell for other toys, which is smart. There's the box. There's also an Empire Strikes Back box. I don't have that one. That one's a lot more rare. And when it comes to Star Wars, it seems like the later boxes are more rare because the first ones were produced in larger quantities. When they put it back out, they put it back out in smaller quantities. Although they kept putting stuff out later on, something like this got put back out in very, very small quantities. All right, so getting into the sand crawler, there's a couple of things. First off, people say, Mike, how do you dust your collection? And I get it out and do reviews. And then I clean them before I do the review. And this thing is the hardest thing to clean. The hardest thing to get, because you don't want to get it too wet. And there's so much detail on it. On the top here, it has these two removable pieces, which I don't know why they're removable. Why did they bother with that? And all this detail back here. So quite a bit of detail that goes into this thing, making it hard to clean. And you, you just, with the electronics, you don't want to just like douse it. Like if it didn't have electronics, I would just it'd just take a shower, you know, it'd be no big deal. But I don't want to get it uh, too wet. Even if you let it dry before you add some ele electricity to the electronics, you could cause rust or something like that. So anyway, looking at this here, this is the side. This side doesn't have an opening door. This is where the elevator would come down. It, the, the treads on this thing are not real treads. They are just uh, like formed treads. And I'm glad they didn't try to do something like that and put rubber treads on it because that would have been really hard to track down. These are already hard enough to get parts and stuff for this thing, let alone getting treads for it, could you imagine? Here's kind of the front view of this guy. And you can see that, that you can look inside here. And if you, maybe if we, in a little bit, we see we can put a Jawa in there. Maybe we can see the Jawa in there. That might be kind of cool. But... Uh, moving it around, the the bottom, I'm going to show here that you can see the date on everything. The date on this says 1979, if I can get all that writing, 1979. And there's where the elevator goes, the wheel that moves, these wheels here that move, and I'll also show you a trick to when we start showing the electronics. If yours doesn't work, the trick might help you out. So let's go ahead and start looking at some of these features. So the first feature on this is the opening door. And I wanna say that this side door here is, it's a problematic part of this. In fact, uh, I think my door is starting to give a little bit. These small bendy hinges give way and break all of the time. And part of this is this ladder does give a little bit more pressure to that. So the more you open it, the more of a chance you, you have to breaking this thing. So it's it's terrible the way that's designed. That is a terrible design. I don't know if there's truly a, a good fix for it or anything, but to get one without that broken is really hard. So looking inside here, you can see a few things in here and I probably could have done a better job of cleaning right here. So one thing that helps when you're trying to clean this and not get it wet, not, not douse it, is just use a Q-tip and get in here with your Q-tip to clean that. 
which I'll probably do a little bit more of that later on. But looking inside, you can see it has stairs, lower stairs here, more stairs going up there. So you can kind of move around. There's foot pegs all through this thing so that you can put some Jawas in there. And that's about what it looks like in there with some Jawas in there. Now, one thing I want to say is about Kenner and when you put the foot pegs a fleet on the foot peg, and it's a Kenner toy from the back of the 80s. You're not worried about the foot breaking, but like G.I. Joe, you're worried about that ankle snapping off, so that's kind of cool right there. Now, moving around to the back part of this, you also have more of the same. Let's try to get some light in, shine some light on that situation, but you got more of the same in there with more foot pegs and more of that good stuff. And moving down to this, we have a ladder. Now, the ladder is detachable from this, which I don't really understand why they made it detachable. So, really, uh, are you going to put the ladder anywhere else? So uh, the detachable ladder is kind of silly. I don't know why they did that, but that's what they did. It's actually a part that's kind of hard to reproduce. Somebody was making reproduction parts for this, and I'll show you another part that needs to be reproduced. And I should have picked several of them up back in the day. I don't know why I didn't, but I just didn't. I was stubborn, I guess. All right, and we, we see the elevator, but we're going to look at the elevator here in a bit. But we'll go ahead and put an R2-D2 in there so that we can... Uh, test the elevator out here in a little while. All right, so testing out the elevator, I put the R2-D2 in it. I push it down just a little bit. Now, we, you, you can drop it and then you'll have to rotate it. Or you could rotate it inside and then drop out and then you have R2-D2. It's like it's made to fit an Aztec droid and, and maybe a Jawa. So then you, just doesn't seem easy to use. I guess, little kid hands, would have worked better than my hands. So, getting R2-D2 out of there. Come on, R2. Anyway, that's the elevator, which is sometimes missing, but that's how they get the droids in. Another thing you could do is, of course, put the figure in, because it usually sucks them up in the, that's kind of how that works. And then your jowls will come along and take them away. Or they're the ones putting it in there. Now this is the elevator. The elevator is supposed to have a sticker right back here, which mine does not. Uh, I guess I could snipe a picture off of the internet or, or buy some good quality reproduction stickers for it. Uh, maybe Toy Hacks makes it or something. So uh, I, I'm really not that worried about it myself, but a lot of people are. A lot of people want to have every sticker and everything like that. Uh, this thing is not 100% complete. It's only 99% complete. So it's missing the sticker and one other thing. So the next feature is this opening door here. So what you can see with this is that you can have four, there's four foot pegs if we can see. The one peg I'm not using is right here. And I put some Jawas in there so your Jawas can be rolling along in this instrument panel here. And it's got a bunch of stickers. So let's get a bit of a different angle on that and we can see everything that's going on in there. And they hold in place okay. I think one of my Jawas has got a kind of a loose foothold, but that's all of the stickers. I did have to kind of like stick some sticky stuff to get them to lay back down. They were kind of curling up and that kind of happens with these stickers over time. But there it is, Jawas in their, uh, what is this, the control room? <laughs> the the pilot seat, the driver's seat. I mean, it's it's interesting because it takes so many of them, but that's how Star Wars was, you know, at, -AT kind of stuff like that. Uh, Sandcrawler has a control room like that. Now, I can't really see the Jawas in there through these holes, so you really couldn't tell if the Jawa was in there or not. But uh, oddly enough, you can see all the way through the back. There's holes in the back of it, too. Strange. So next up, I want to discuss the electronics in this thing and how it rides and all of that. So there is the remote. My remote is missing the battery cover, but it doesn't really matter because as long as you have the connection, it will work. So that's all you need to know. And I'm going to rave opening this door again without breaking it hopefully and here is the battery compartment now you need two i think d batteries and then if you can see it right there you also need a nine volt now if let's explain how the electronics work the electronics work in a way that the d batteries provide a backwards measure to it the nine volt is an interruption to the backwards mechanism which makes it go forward so this interrupts the nine volt that sounds strange so if your nine volts bad it'll go backwards only if your nine volts good when you turn it on it'll go forward and then your remote will make it go backward maybe i confused everyone 
But if you turn the thing on and it won't go forward, it only goes backwards, then you need a new 9 volt or there's a problem with your 9 volt. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, now getting into this, let's test it out. Push the button. It goes back and turns. You know, classic, classic 80, or 90, 80s, 70s style. I had a That's what it does. That might be a heavily edited, edited segment. There's just a lot going on with that. But that's how the electronics work. And I hope I kind of explained it well enough that you understand. Let's get him more sand. And I do want to do some comparisons next, but I kind of wanted to showcase the electronics, how the thing works, and maybe give you some troubleshooting ideas. The last troubleshooting idea for electronics that I'm going to give you is if you put the batteries in it, and you know your batteries are good, and you turn it on and nothing happens, then one thing, and hey, if it doesn't work, and you, it doesn't work, but I turned mine on and all mine had the problem and I just roll it, like this, like, and with it on, and I just roll it and I give it a few rolls, that the way it's designed, it will turn that motor. Kenner motors just need to be turned if they haven't been used in 10, 20, 30 years. So that's always worked for me on sand crawlers, it might work for you. It might actually still damage your sand crawler. So, warning. All right, so getting into size comparisons here. The first comparison I want to make is to an X-Wing. Now, the X-Wing is in a much cheaper class of toy than this, but I just really thought this would be way bigger than an X-Wing. And just looking at it, it's about the similar length, maybe slightly longer than an X-Wing. But of course, the bulk in it, it's built up. And much taller, and there's much more you can do with it. But there it is, size by an X-Wing. So if you have an X-Wing, you're like, oh, it's just a little bit longer than an X-Wing. And it's definitely not as wide as the X-Wing. So that's my first comparison. But I think the more interesting comparison is this upcoming one. All right, so here it is compared to the Disney Store exclusive. Oh, wait. You can't see it. Let me move things around, because the Disney Store exclusive is so much bigger. Okay, so my attempted comedy is is a failure. It's a complete failure. But I want to say the Disney one is great. I made a video about that already talking about how the Disney one is great. And there's a lot of really cool features, way more features, way bigger. I think they sell it for a hundred bucks. I don't know if they're sold out on the Disney shop, shop Disney or whatever, but I'm impressed with this. And that's probably why they didn't do a, a, a HasLab of this, but I still think they should do a HasLab of this. But anyway, Looking at them side by side, let's see a bit of a different angle. The Disney one is wide. A lot of people complain about the color scheme on it, but I think it really is pretty accurate to the show. We're just used to the vintage one, so so we complain about stuff that doesn't match our old toys. But I think this is probably more accurate. And yeah, I can see why people complain about the color scheme and and all the extra all the extra gimmicks with this one just makes it it's just amazing. And there's so much more you can do when it's so much bigger, you know. Again, I don't want to do, spend too much time on this because, of course, I, I already made a whole other review of this thing here. It is great. It's amazing. It's awesome. I really liked it, what Disney did with it, even though a lot of people don't. And there's the back shot. And I, I realize I probably didn't show a good back shot of this already, so this is a good time to do it. You can compare them side by side and see what's going on with all the extra paint apps and stuff. This thing blows this away, but nothing truly will ever replace the original. My wife says, right? So I really hope you enjoyed this look at the Kenner 1979 Radio Control Jawa Sand Crawler. I do want to say that if you're in the market for one of these, they are expensive. And people ask $400 for a remote. People ask stupid crazy money, but yet auctions only go so far. So my two bits of advice are Find an auction that's starting at like a reasonable price, like oh, 100 bucks, and then it goes up to 300 or whatever. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to buy two or three of these that, that each have the part you're missing, complete yourself one, and then sell your extras back into the community. And as you can see, you'll get the going rate. And at the end of the day, you'll get a complete one cheaper. It takes a little bit more time, a little more work, and a little more effort. But that's my suggestion if you want to get one of these, you want to get a complete, and you don't want to spend ridiculous amounts of money. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you have one of these? Are you in the market for one of these? Have you always just avoided it because of the price? Like, subscribe. Tadirim Hanger, out.